Hi, my name is Paul Grogan. Welcome to the Gaming Rules video log for the month of July 2020. In this video log, I'm going to talk about all of the games that I've been playing since the last video log, which was around the middle of June. Um, I'm going to cover some of the content that I've been creating, other things that I've been up to, and what I'm doing over the next few weeks. So I tried to do these video logs around the start of the month. That hasn't been happening. Uh, so we are currently on the 13th of July. I was going to do this last week, but then yeah, a lot of other things got a bit out of control. So I'm doing it this week. Uh, and this video log is going to cover everything from the 18th of June right through to uh, yesterday or even this morning. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to say, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I tried to film these video logs at various points around the house. I've been outside a few times. Um, I haven't been down the local pub yet to film one. Maybe I'll do that next time. Uh, not that I've been to my local pub, um, but today I'm in the hallway. So yeah, something a bit different in the hallway. This is where we, are, where we are. I hope it comes out okay. Right, first thing is, or second thing, is all of the games that I've been playing. So first of all, on the 18th of June, I played City Builder. Now, it's um, City Builder is a game which was on Kickstarter at the time I did the video. Um, it's been published by Inside Up Games, and I did a live... Uh, tutorial and playthrough of the video uh, with Conor McGooey from Inside Up Games uh, and one of the developers, I think he was a developer of the game as well, apologies if I got that wrong, uh, certainly somebody part of the, the Inside Up team. And we did a three player game that is on the channel now if you want to go and watch it. The Kickstarter has finished but if you're interested in it uh, that video is live on the channel. City Builder Ancient World to give it its full title. It's um, yeah, it's a tile laying game, um, but the way that the player interaction works is really clever. So between each of the two players, there is this little track with some uh, coloured markers on it. And as you take markers off your end of that track, your opponent or that opponent on that side is trying to take markers off their end. And basically when there's one marker left, neither player can take it. So that's what determines, you know, if you push down one of those lanes and you get right to the end of your opponent, then your opponent can't take any off that particular track. So that, that's quite clever. But what you're doing is you're, you're essentially taking, you, you get a hand of tiles, it's, it's three tiles, and you'll draw one more, I think, at the end of your turn, or the start of your turn, can't quite remember, and you'll place that onto your board, and you're trying to build up this city, and you're trying to build areas with different colours in that gives you buildings that allow you to attract citizens, and there are these bigger buildings that are end game scoring tiles. Really good. I wasn't sure what to expect from it when I went into the game, but it's a very clever game. The playtime was good. The, as I say, the amount of play and interaction on a tile lane game where you're building up your own city, that was really good as well. So yeah, City Builder, Ancient World, as a Kickstarter is finished, I'm not trying to sell you the game. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I think about that. Then on June 19th, I covered a game called Swatch. Now, Swatch, uh, is designed by Scott. Uh, Minerva Games is the publisher. and This is not on Kickstarter yet. I mean, it might be at the time you're watching this video. But Scott was going to take the game to UK Games Expo. He had a booth sorted uh, and he was going to be demoing the game in preparation for the Kickstarter launching. And of course, UK Games Expo this year was cancelled. Scott is a UK small independent games designer. So I said, look, we'll have you on the show. I'll do a video and you can show me how to play the game. So if you're interested in Swatch, it is a family weight game uh, where basically you're making colour palettes. So you're, you're drafting cards from a row and you're using those cards to gain these colours which you then mix together to make other colours which you use to take the swatches, okay? As I say, family weight game, if you're interested in it, the video's on the channel and the Kickstarter is going live. He did tell me when, I think it's maybe the start of August. Um, I'll put a link to it in the show notes below. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Swatch. And then also on the 19th of June, I did a live playthrough of Too Many Bones Undertow uh, with Jeremy Howard. Now, Jeremy Howard does his own YouTube channel. He's also part of Man vs. Meeple. Jeremy is an absolutely top bloke. Um, yeah, and we have similar tasting games. So it was an honor to have him on the show. And yeah, we, we had a really, really good game. We unfortunately had a lot of technical issues. I think my software crashed about four times during the stream. So thank you to everybody for bearing with us during that. Uh, it was... <laughs> It was a bit of a difficult stream. Um, it's just one of those things the software does occasionally crash. But yeah, it crashed four times that night. So yeah, that was a heck of a night. I think it was a Friday night. But it was a brilliant game. Really enjoyed the game. We didn't do very well. Um, yeah, we, we played badly. I was using a new character. In fact, Jeremy was using a new character as well. We were using two of the new characters. Um, 
that, that aren't included in Undertow. So we were playing Undertow, but with two extra characters that Tube Theory Games had sent. Um, yeah, which were really interesting in the way that they work, but yeah, we were both playing them for the first time. So huge thank you to everybody in the chat who was helping us out with the rules, um, because we we were a bit confused by certain points in there. Um, but yeah, and Too Many Bones is one of those games that if I had more time, I would play it more regularly. And it's one of those games that I think I need to play more regularly because I'm liking what I've seen so far. But like a lot of complex games, the rules overhead is a little bit of a barrier. And if I leave it too long before playing again, that barrier will be there again. Whereas if I play Too Many Bones like, you know, every week for a couple of months, I'll really start enjoying it and I'll be able to get past the hurdle of the rules and actually start delving deep into understanding the game. Whereas at the moment, I'm still in that place where... The, the rules complication and the rules overhead is actually affecting my enjoyment of a game because, you know, I don't feel completely comfortable with it. I'm having to look things up now and again, and that is distracting me from, from the game itself. Great game once you get to know it, but there is a little bit of a barrier to learning it. On Saturday the 20th, I took some time out over the weekend to do something that I've been planning to do because this is the weekend that should have been Origins. Origins was cancelled. Then it should have been Origins Online, Origins Online got cancelled. Um, so instead, uh, that's one reason why I did the Too Many Bones with Jeremy, because I was going to be seeing Jeremy that weekend anyway. Um, but I took the opportunity to teach a friend of mine in America, uh, Eric Buscemi, who helps run the Punchboard Media Network that I'm part of. Me and Eric had planned to meet up and play Ashes. I was going to teach him how to play Ashes. That wasn't going to happen because obviously Origins Online wasn't happening, um, but we did it anyway. So yeah, Ashes is a fantastic game. Really, really good game. It's my favourite two-player Wizards dueling card game. Uh, the game has been cancelled, um, but there's rumours of it might be coming back. And there's a big community for Ashes which is helping keep it alive. And yeah, that's really good. It was really good to play again. Uh, and a friend of mine, Ben, who's you know really... Uh, knows the game extremely well. Ben was in the Skype conversation with us and helping us out with a couple of rules things along the way. So yeah, thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much, Eric. Really good game. Do want to play Ashes more. I say this almost every game I play, I want to play it more, but that's how it is. On the 21st of June, continuing my playthroughs of games with designers, uh, 21st of June was the date that the embargo was lifted on Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Now, I'm in the position where I received a copy ahead of time, but wasn't able to do any coverage for it until the 21st. So on the 21st of June, I did a live two-player playthrough of Scenario 1 with Isaac Childress. Isaac didn't need to teach me how to play. I did know how to play the game, so that was, that was fine, unlike the other ones that I've mentioned. Um, but yeah, got to play the Scenario 1. Now, for those people who don't know, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is a smaller version of Gloomhaven. And the way that it approaches the teaching of the game is it does so over a period of five scenarios. So the first five scenarios you play will be gradually teaching you how to play the game. Now, for those of you watching who know what my particular preferred method of, of demoing games is, you'll know it's exactly that. It's not to give everybody all of the rules up front, to gradually teach you the rules as you play the game. So obviously Isaac has done that for Jaws of the Lion, and it's a fantastic way of introducing the game because Gloomhaven itself big box, you know, massive rule book, it's a barrier to entry for people who aren't into that kind of games. Whereas Jaws of the Lion Scenario 1 is like, look, you're going to move around, you're going to fight some monsters, it's going to be really easy. Right, and then Scenario 2 brings in extra rules. Basically, if you were put off by Gloomhaven because it's a massive box, it's really expensive, and it was a lot of rules to learn, I would recommend trying out Jaws, Jaws of the Lion because it, it gets you there in a uh, it, it, yeah, it makes learning the game a lot easier. On the 22nd of June, I did another video where a designer of a game taught me how to play. I did a lot of these this week. This was Europe Divided. Um, and it has to be said, uh, these videos, the Gloomhaven one was sponsored by Cephalophy Games. All of the other ones were not sponsored at all. It's I'll, I'll come on to my Patreon later on, but yeah, if you think that all of these videos were sponsored videos and I was advertising the game, they weren't. They were just me who wanted to know more about the game and I reached out to these people. Uh, obviously, it's helping them promote the game, but yeah, I didn't get paid for it, so just wanted to make that clear. So on the 22nd, I did Europe Divided. Now, Europe Divided, designed by David Thompson and Chris Marling, it's a game I've, I've seen a few times and I've heard 
was really good and never had a chance to play it. And then I saw a tweet from Chris Marling to say, oh, Europe Divided is now available on Tabletop Simulator. And I was like, right, I'm on it. Um, and I know David Thompson, so I reached out to Chris and David and I said, look, how about we find a time where we can play online and you can teach me how to play uh, and we'll play and I'll stream it live on the channel. And we did that. Europe Divided, initial impression, wow. I mean, it really, really good game. Think, think sort of Twilight Struggle-ish, maybe, but not really. But there are some elements of that. Um, but yeah, really good game. Uh, and yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, if you want to just see the, the start of the video that I did or have a look at the game itself, it, it wasn't a big hit. And I think it deserves to be. My impression from playing the game is that I thoroughly enjoyed it, wanted to play it again straight away, and why isn't this game more popular than it than it is? So yeah, Europe Divided really enjoyed that. Okay, so that was the 22nd of June. Then I went into Virtual GridCon. So each year, <laughs> twice a year, I run my own convention called GridCon. However, there has only been one official GridCon, and that was at the end of last year. There was supposed to be one at the last weekend in June, and that didn't happen because of COVID-19. So we had to cancel GridCon, uh, and we were looking at delaying it, but in the end we decided to cancel it. So the, the actual GridCon 2 is going to happen in November. And we moved everybody's tickets forward, so nobody's lost out on anything. Um, but I thought, well, hang on a minute. Last weekend in June, I was supposed to be running my own convention. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do a virtual convention instead, but I don't want it to be a big job. Um, you know, I just want it to be, maybe I'll put up a Discord server, Maybe we'll get some people together to play some online games. Yeah, and it'll just be a very light touch and I won't do very much. Yeah, that idea went out the window as soon as I got going with it because then I thought, right, I'm going to actually turn this into a proper thing. And I ended up doing, yeah, we'll, we'll come into it more later on, but I ran a, a virtual convention and a charity raffle all at the same time. Uh, and it was, a, it, it was a heck of a few days, <laughs> let's put it that way. The games that I played over that virtual convention. First thing is Under Falling Skies times three. I wasn't sure whether to record this or not because technically speaking, I didn't actually play Under Falling Skies. What I did is I, I had the game set up at home uh, and I, I used Skype conversation to share my screen, attached my video camera to Skype and I taught other people how to play. So over that weekend, I did three games of Under Falling Skies where two people learned how to play. I, you know, we're on the call, I taught them how to play and then we played the game. On the Saturday, I did it with Patrick and Arnold, which are two of the young adults over in Uganda that's part of the uh, charity that we were supporting. That was, yeah, I'll come on to that later on, but it was possibly the most rewarding demo I've ever done in my life. So yeah, Under Falling Skies, new game coming from CGE uh, this year. Uh, it is a solo game, but I personally think it plays best with two people playing together as a team. Uh, so yeah, that's what ha that's what happened uh, over that weekend. I did three streams of that. If you're interested in that, uh, go and check them out. I would definitely recommend watching game two, which is the one with Patrick and Arnold. J yeah, just to see how they how they dealt with it. Right. Also that weekend, I played three games of Code Names using CGE's online way of playing Code Names, which I don't think is officially live yet, but it's working. Uh, that was streamed as well. So if you want to see us playing Code Names. That's on the channel. Other games that I played that are on the channel, I did a game of Zolkin. So this was a teaching game of Zolkin, uh, which was a few people, including Jay from Three Minute Board Games, uh, who have been wanting, wanting to play a game with for a while. So yeah, we played Zolkin. Now I didn't actually play. We used, um, what did we use? Board Game Arena. Um, but I was there as a spectator. Okay, so I wasn't actually in the game myself. I was just spectating the game and I was teaching them how to play the game. Uh, Tolkien is a game that I enjoy teaching. If you want to see me teaching it and you want to see a three-player game of it, that's on the channel now. Um, what else did I do? I did a Railroad Revolution game, which again, I, I didn't play in the game. I don't think I played in the game. Did I play in the game or not? No, I don't think I did. So I ran a game of Railroad Revolution. Now this one, we didn't use any online tools. I had the game set up. Well, we used the internet. Uh, I had the physical game set up and I was teaching other people how to play the game and they played the game. Yeah, I didn't actually play in that game myself, so I shouldn't really be talking about it here because this is the section on games that I played, but never mind. Railroad Revolution. Uh, Cloudspire also was the Sunday. 
So I taught two of my friends how to play Cloudspire on the Sunday. Again, I wasn't playing myself, uh, but I taught them how to play. So I taught Ian and Andy how to play, and that was a fairly short game because, um, yeah, it was running quite long because obviously teaching people a fairly complex game. Uh, and yeah, we use Tabletop Simulator for it because although Cloudspire is, <laughs> the physical components are amazing and it looks amazing, there's no way I'd have been able to teach the game remotely uh, without Andy and Ian being able to see close up what was going on. So we use Tabletop Simulator for that. Um, so, and again, I didn't really play that. Games that I played that weekend, I played a great game of Six Nymphed. Six Nymphed is a very simple card game, and it's one of the games that I was playing in the late 90s when I was transitioning into board games. Everybody I know had a copy of Six Nymphed. It's fun. But I last played it years ago, and my memories of it now are it was a bit of fun, but it's actually quite random. You choose a card from your hand, and then the cards are all revealed, and then depending on what numbers you've played, they go on a board. And I think as my gaming tastes evolved, I realised, okay, this is a bit too random for me. I'm not really that bothered by it. But I think it was the Friday night, and I was really tired, and I thought, I just want to play a quick game. And people suggested Six Nymphed, and we played it, and it was fantastic. Loved it. And I, I, I felt it, it was less random than I remembered. I was actually making decisions. Now, of course, it's cards. You might have the wrong number at the wrong time. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. it was just, I mean, the company and the atmosphere of playing with other people was good. Um, so it, it was that. But yeah, I really enjoyed that game. So that's Six Nymphed, or I think it's called Take Six in, in English. Um, we also played two games of just one over the weekend, one of which was live streamed. The other one wasn't. The first game we did of just one that was using Discord. Now, I'm fairly new to using Discord, and we used the Discord video chat feature, and there was about 11 of us in this game of just one, and oh, it, yeah, it, it didn't really work. People's videos were frozen for like a minute at a time. It was quite painful to do it, but it, we, we got it to work, and it was good fun. On the Sunday, the last game of Virtual GridCon was uh, another game of just one, and this was using Tabletop Simulator. There's a mod for Tabletop Simulator that's quite cool, and I think this was about nine or ten of us, and we played like this hour and a half game of just one. Uh, that was on the channel. I think it was on the channel. Yeah, I think that was streamed. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing that, that was there. Um, back to other games that I've been playing, because that was the end of Virtual GridCon. Games that I've been playing. I did a live stream where me and Rick played the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective demo scenario number two. Now, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a game which I've been playing since the early 80s. Um, it's a fantastic game, and Space Cowboys have just released box four, which is the Baker Street Irregulars. And to sort of, you know, celebrate that, or as a, as a prequel to that, they released this freely downloadable demo scenario, uh, and me and Rick played it. So I did a live Q&A with Dave Neal, who is the guy who's created all of these scenarios. And then me and Rick played it, and we kind of made it a little bit interactive. So we were playing the game, me and Rick were making the decisions, but we were actually looking to the chat to get some inspiration on, on, on where to go and, you know, everything else. <clears throat> so really enjoyed that. It's a good demo scenario. If you haven't seen it and you want to watch us playing it, the video's on the channel. If you want to download it and play it yourself, then let me know and I can send you the link. Or just go to the video, and the link is in the show notes. Just don't play the video if you don't want any spoilers. Although you might want to watch the Q&A at the start with Dave Neal, because I thought that was quite interesting. Tainted Grail is next. Now, I've got Tainted Grail down here in the middle of what I'm talking about. We've played it in this four or five week, what is it, three weeks since the last one? Yeah, about three weeks since the last video log. We have played Tainted Grail about four or five times. I didn't record them all, and I'm sure there's more. But me and Vicky are still playing Tainted Grail, and it is still a game that we are absolutely loving. If you didn't watch last month's video log, I am going to say something similar to what I said then, which is we are playing on story mode and with a couple of extra house rules. I haven't yet got around to typing up those house rules so people can see uh, what it is that we're using, but they have changed the game for us. Um, playing through chapter two, when we started playing the game, we almost stopped playing. But with the introduction of story mode and a couple of other tweaks, we're really enjoying it. We are still on chapter seven. Chapter seven is huge. 
Um, we're, st we're still playing it. We've, we don't know. We, we, are, we think we're almost at the end of Chapter 7. We're due to play again tomorrow night, and we might finish Chapter 7. But yeah, Chapter 7 is massive. So Tainted Grail, playing it a lot, still really enjoying it, and yeah, more about that in, in other video logs. I can't really say too much more without, without too many spoilers. Um, but yeah, really enjoying it. Right. Sunday, 5th of July we finished our Aeon's End Legacy campaign. So Aeon's End Legacy is a game that me, Rick, and Victoria, not my Vicky, Rick's Victoria, um, have been playing for the last couple of months, and we finished it. So we finished all chapters of Aeon's End Legacy undefeated. We had a straight run. We blitzed through. We, we didn't lose a single game. We were close a couple of times, um, but yeah, we, we completed it. Um, yeah, every scenario, first time. Aeon's End Legacy, if you haven't heard me say this before, is fantastic. I love Aeon's End. I think it's a brilliant game. And Aeon's End Legacy is one of the best uh, self-contained, campaign-driven, evolving legacy-type games there is. It's really good. I liked the story. I liked the different scenarios. It's extremely good. And a couple of those games were very, very tight. Um, but yeah, Aeon's End Legacy, glad we've finished the campaign, because I like finishing things. But sad that we finished the campaign because it was so good. Um, would I play the Aeon's End Legacy campaign again? Yes, I absolutely would. We were using Tabletop Simulator because of lockdown. Rick and Victoria can't come round. Um, I would definitely play it again and I would make different choices next time. The scenarios are a linear scenarios, but the choices that you make will affect how you perform within that scenario. So yeah, Aeon's End Legacy, finished for now, but really good. On the 7th of July, back to my... Paul invites a designer to teach him how to play a game. I did Intrepid. So Intrepid started out with me seeing a tweet from um, Eric Yurko, who does What's Eric Playing? Uh, what's... Oh, I got this wrong last time. What What Eric's Playing? That's it. Is it he's on Twitter, uh, and uh, he does lots of photos of games, and he does lots of reviews of games. Really good, because really good stuff. Uh, and I saw him basically tweet out a photo of this game, and I went, ooh! And just from the image of the game, I thought, well, that looks like the kind of game, of game I like. Dials, cubes, numbers, ooh. Um, and then other people were talking about it as well. So I approached the designer, and this is actually just before uh, Miguel, one of my patron supporters, helped make this happen as well. Um, but Jeff Beck, the designer of Intrepid, got in contact with me just before Virtual Gridcon and said, well, he, 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 can, he, can he run a demo of it at Virtual Gridcon? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you could. And in fact, I'm interested in the game as well, and I'd, I'd like to cover it on the channel as well. So we, we arranged it all. And then basically on, uh, I think it's Tuesday, 7th of July, uh, there's a video. So it's a live video. It's on my channel now. Me and Jeff playing the game on Tabletopia. Jeff uh, taught me how to play the game. So I didn't know anything about the game going into it. Uh, so the video is Jeff teaching me how to play and me playing it. And yeah. It's funny how sometimes I can look at a game and go, oh, that looks like the kind of game I'd like. Quite often I'm wrong, because it's just literally an, an, a gut reaction based on the game, or based on the image. But for this game, yeah, really, really good. It's a cooperative game where you're on board the International Space Station, there's disasters happening, you've got a mission, you've got to take into account your food supplies, your temperature, oxygen levels, and all sorts of other things. Uh, and yeah, dice placement. The, one of the coolest things I think about the game is the fact that you play a particular uh, nation. So I was playing the Germans uh, and Jeff was playing the uh, Brazil and each faction plays asymmetrically and I'm not talking just a special power, I'm talking the whole way that it plays is a completely different game to the way that other people play, uh, other factions play, other nations play. So yeah, that's really cool. So that's Intrepid. Uh, that might still be on Kickstarter right now? I'm not sure. But yeah, it was on Kickstarter at the time we did the video. I think it might have finished now. Okay, the next day, so this is Wednesday the 8th of July and Thursday the 9th, uh, Perseverance. Perseverance is the next big game from Mind Clash Games. Mind Clash Games do big, complex Euro games. They've done Tricarian, they've done Anachrony, they've done Cerebria. Uh, Perseverance is their next big one. Uh, and that was launching on Kickstarter, well it has launched on Kickstarter, so it's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, this was sponsored coverage of the game, but basically I did two tutorial and playthrough videos. The first one was episode one and the second one was episode two. Perseverance is going to be four episodes in total. 
Each one is a separate standalone game. There is an, there is an ongoing story between them, but it isn't a narrative-driven game, okay? This isn't like a legacy game. There's no books to read. There's no narrative or anything like that. It is a Euro game, but there is an ongoing story between the four different episodes. Episode one and two is on Kickstarter right now. It's doing really well. Uh, but if you're interested in learning more about dinosaurs, crashed luxury yachts on islands, then go and check out those videos. I would definitely watch the episode one video first because we explain a lot of the rules in episode one, whereas episode two builds on those rules. So you, I think you'll struggle to watch episode two on its own without having watched at least the rules explanation for episode one. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately I've got to send that prototype now off to other people for them to play. But yeah, Perseverance... I don't want to give too much of my personal opinions on the game because that was sponsored coverage. Um, but yes. On the 10th, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Again, but this time, actually playing case one from the new, uh, the new box set. So box four of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is the Baker Street Irregulars. Uh, I mentioned that we did the demo scenario earlier on. Well, on the 10th of July, four of us got together. So this is uh, me, Vicky, Rick, Victoria, and we played through case one together of this box set. Now, we did it remotely. Me and Vicky were here. Rick and Victoria were there at their house. Uh, we used Skype and everything else, and it worked fine. So this, this is a game which you can absolutely play remotely with other people, and I highly recommend you, you, you try and get in a game. If you haven't got the game, find somebody who has the game, get a Skype call with them or a Zoom call or whatever you use, and just play the game with them, because it's fantastic. Uh, we did case one. It was easier and it was shorter than I remember. These, these cases, and I don't know if it's because it's case one, I need to drop Dave a message and say, are they all like this? We, we really enjoyed it, okay? It's not that we didn't enjoy it, but we normally score really badly and it normally takes us about three hours. It took us about an hour and 45 minutes and we scored 115, which means we actually beat Holmes when I said that could never happen and, and we just did it. Um, because Holmes normally solves it in like two locations. He solved it in nine and we only went to 12. Now, we didn't get all the questions right. We got most of the questions right and we're very happy with what we managed to solve about the case ourselves, but there was one bit of the case that we didn't quite get right. Um, but yeah, really good. Looking forward to playing the others and we're probably gonna be doing that over the next couple of months. So you're gonna be hearing more about Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Box 4 in the next few video logs as we gradually play through them. Um, and then finally, on Sunday the 11th of July, which was, no, sorry, Saturday the 11th of July, that was two days ago, we played The Detective Society, case number two. Now, this isn't out yet, okay? The Detective Society is a series of puzzle games, which was on Kickstarter, has finished. Uh, I'm part of the testing team for these scenarios. If you backed The Detective Society, I believe that case one is now done, finalized, and maybe gone to the printers, I think, and you should be getting that in the post at some point. I don't know exactly when, um, but on Saturday, we tested case two. I think we're one of the first people to have tested it. Um, so again, I can't really say much about it other than we really enjoyed it uh, because me and Vicky like those kind of games, and we found a couple of things that needed some tweaking. They're going to tweak them, they're going to run it through another series of tests with some other people, and then that one will be ready as well. So for the next sort of four months or so, uh, we will be testing all of the cases for the Detective Society as they get finished and as they come out. And that's it. That's all of the games that I've been playing. Let's have a quick drink. Content that I've made. So the content that I've made since the last video log. I did a live Q&A. Uh, which I normally do on the last Wednesday of the month. So that was a really fun one. One of the things that came out in that live Q&A though, I need to go back to it. It's on my list of things to do because there were a few questions that I got asked in the live Q&A, which I was like, oh, I can't answer this, but this would be a great thread on my BGG Guild. And I still haven't gone away and created that thread on the BGG Guild. So at some point, and I really need to do this, is I need to listen back through my own live Q&A, which is why I don't really want to do it, Find out those questions. I should have written down timestamps or something. Find those questions which I think would have been best to ask as a question on the BGG Guild and then do it. So if you asked one of those questions and I said, I'll put it on the BGG Guild and I didn't, and you're thinking, oh, Paul, why has he not done it? I will get back to it. I feel bad and it's on my list of things to do. So I'll do that. Can't even remember what the questions were. Um, 
Right, other videos. I have done two how to play videos in the last few weeks. This is for something special. This is for a game called Diamond the Game. And I'll tell you now, this is a, this is a game aimed at, uh, there's actually two of them. So there's two videos on my channel. There's the short, short version and the normal version. The short version uh, isn't a short version of the video, it's a short version of the game and it's aimed for ages five and up. Uh, and the, the actual game is ages 10 and up. So this isn't your super complex heavy Euro game that I'm normally covering. And the reason why I'm saying it's special is it's different. It's something, it's something different. Now, in the UK, we have a particle accelerator, which I didn't realize, okay? And some of the scientists who work at that particle accelerator uh, got in contact with Matthew Dunstan Matthew is a scientist anyway, uh, and he knows the people there, and they have worked on designing this game which is aimed at kids in schools, okay? And they wanted me to do the how to play video for it. That was, this was planned. However, when coronavirus hit and lockdown happened, they decided that they were gonna do a print and play version of their game so that people right now have got something to play. So they redesigned their board game into a print and play version. They did two versions, as I say, one for a, one for a younger audience. Um, and then they basically said, Paul, can, can you do the how to play videos for these? So I said, yeah, sure. And I've done them. So they're on the channel now. So they are, if, if you are interested in a game where, it, it, as I say, it's aimed for kids and they play scientists and they go around doing research in a particle accelerator and succeeding in experiments, then go and check out the videos on the channel now. And later this year, they are working on an actual board game, proper board game that you can buy, which is going to be uh, put into schools, and I assume it'll be put into retail as well. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be coming later on. But for now, two how to play videos of the print and play version is on the channel. Other content that I've made, apart from the live playthroughs that I've already mentioned, I did an unboxing video on the 19th of June of Too Many Bones, Splice and Dice and the two extra characters which we then used in the video itself. So that was a live unboxing video where basically I got up one morning, did it and people joined me in the chat as we did it. So that was cool. I did the same with Jaws of the Lion. So I mentioned earlier on I did the playthrough of Jaws of the Lion with Isaac. Well in the morning I actually did a live unboxing of it uh, and that's quite cool. Um, live unboxings I quite like doing. It's a little unusual to do an unboxing video that isn't properly filmed and edited but having a live unboxing with people there in the chat was, was quite enjoyable. So yeah, I'm going to do more of them. Other things that happened over Virtual GridCon, I did some live Q&As. So these are all on the channel now, but if you're interested in a live Q&A with Matthew Dunstan, Vita Lacerda, David Turtsey, uh, and Ryan Courtney, not all together, separately, four different live Q&As. If you're interested in a live Q&A with any of those designers, those videos are on the channel right now. Other content that I've been making is digital games. And I'm gonna cover digital games a little bit, um, but I'm gonna talk about the content. I was gonna cover digital games later on actually, but I might cover them now. So in the last few weeks, I've been spending quite a lot of time playing digital games. I've actually taken, uh, certainly over the last few weeks, I've taken a step back from the paid work so much of what I've just mentioned that I've done was not sponsored. It's all purely funded through the Patreon campaign. I could not do it without the support of my Patreon campaign and I will get onto the Patreon campaign in a minute. Um, but I've been playing a lot of digital games and I've been streaming. I've been streaming some of them. So Tainted Grail has a digital app. I have done a few videos on that on my channel, playing through either the conquest mode and also playing through the campaign mode. If you're interested in seeing the Tainted Grail digital app, then there's, there's a whole bunch of videos on my channel now. Uh, yeah, go and check them out. Also, I started playing This War of Mine. Now, This War of Mine is a board game. There is also a computer game. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between the two, and I started playing the computer game, and I've started live streaming it. Three parts are on the channel right now, and I was gonna do part four this week, but I don't know if I'll have time, so I'll I might do it this week. Oh no, I won't have time this weekend. Um, I'm not sure. I'll try and fit in part four if I can. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying the computer game. It's very dark uh, in terms of, you know, it, it's based on real life and the decisions you have to make in the game are quite difficult at times. Um, 
makes me feel a bit uncomfortable playing it, but that's just one of those things because this actually is based on you know true stories and what, what actually happened. Uh, but yeah, so this War of Mine, if you're interested in my playthroughs, part one, two, and three are on the channel now. Um, I've also been playing quite a bit of Gwent. I can't remember who it was who told me about this game, but it was probably during the last live Q&A. I think that's when it was, and we were talking about card games or something like that, I don't know. Somebody said, have you played Gwent? And I'm like, nope, not played it, don't know what it is, never heard of it. Went on, downloaded it, and thought, oh, this looks a bit, nah, this is a bit simple, I don't really get this, this is just playing cards with numbers on, and then your turn, you play a card, and then I play a card, and whoever's got the highest total at the end of the round wins. That's not very good, is it? And then I started playing it a bit more, and I was like, ah, oh, the cards have powers. Oh, and this one has that, and oh, and ah. And I've been playing a lot of Gwent, okay? Every day I'm playing it. I'm probably playing at least two or three games every day, and a bunch of patron supporters have joined in. It's really good. It's a very, very good card game. I really enjoy it, and it's free to play. It's one of those free to play. There are in-game purchases if you want to. I haven't bought any. Um, and I'm, I'm getting enough ore and rewards and stuff just from playing uh, that I'm able to craft my own cards and everything else. If you're interested in online digital card games, I would definitely go and check it out. If you want something that's a bit different from every other card game out there, then go and check it out. Because, without going into too much detail, a lot of card games like this, so you know, Magic the Gathering, Ashes, Hearthstone, all of those sorts of games are all, you're trying to kill your opponent, you're summoning creatures, they're attacking your opponent. Right, I like these games, okay? Gwent is different. Gwent is played over 15 rounds. You have a deck of cards, which is 25 cards, and so not 60, 25 or more, but normally 25 cards. You draw 10 at the start of round one, and you play round one, and then when you go into round two, you just draw another three cards. There's no card draw within a round, okay? You start with those 10 cards, you can mulligan three of them, um, but then you just play that round with those cards. It isn't a draw one card at the start of your round or anything like that. Then at the start of round two, you draw three cards from your deck and add them to whatever cards you've got left in your hand. I could go on for ages about it. It's just really good. If you're interested, have a quick look at it. And if you wanna learn how to play, the tutorials included in the game are a bit rubbish, but I've done a video for you. So I did a video, which is about an hour and a half long, but you don't have to watch all of it, on how to get started with Gwent, okay? You see me playing a game and explaining how it works, then you see me going into the deck builder, then you see me playing a game against a, a real person. So yeah, that's on the channel now, that is Gwent, really enjoying it, very good game. Uh, yeah, if you wanna play, uh, use the friend code. If, yeah, if you're interested, I'll actually put a friend code uh, down in this thing, um, down in the, in the show notes. So please have a look in the show notes, uh, because there's a refer a friend and I'll get a bonus if you start playing. Finally, digital games that I've been doing some coverage of is Conan Exiles. Now, this all came about in a bit of a weird way, but the Epic Game Store, which is uh, an online gaming platform which sells games, every week has a free game. And because I'm on there, I get a pop-up and say, oh, free game. Oh, I'll have that. And I, I say yes and I download it. And then next week, oh, free game. Yeah, I'll have that, download it. I never get a chance to play these games. And then a few weeks ago, I decided I need to take a bit of time for myself and I'm going to play a computer game. And I looked through my epic library and I saw Ark, survival something or other. And I thought, ah, I've heard about this game. It's got dinosaurs in it and it's a crafting survival game. I love crafting survival games, okay? And it's got dinosaurs in it. This is going to be cool. So I downloaded it, or uh, yeah, I think I'd, it was in my library, but I hadn't downloaded it. So I downloaded it and it was huge, massive game, right? And I started playing it uh, and I started streaming it. So there's a couple of videos on my channel of me streaming it. Um, and then eventually I got a bit bored with it because once you've crafted a little house, I didn't really know what to do. There was no quests, there were no direction. And everything that I wanted to do in the game, I had to basically go to a Wikipedia article, not Wikipedia, a wiki or something, and Google it. How do I do this? How do I do that? And I was having to constantly look up on another site what I'm supposed to be doing. But there didn't really seem to be any direction in the game. So, kind of gave up on that. But somebody suggested, ah, why don't you try Conan Exiles? Because that's a crafting survival game. And I was like, ah, 
Okay, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'll have a look at that. And then it turns out that Conan Exiles was going to be coming free on the Epic Game Store on my birthday. It was my birthday recently. And I was like, yes, brilliant. A game that I'm going to like, because people said I'm going to like it. It's free. Uh, and it's going live on my birthday. Brilliant. And there I was, pressing F5, launching the Epic Game Store. It still wasn't appearing. It still wasn't appearing. And then all of a sudden, I saw an announcement that said, yeah, last minute change of plans. It's not going to be appearing. I was like, oh, but it's my birthday and I was going to get this game. Huh, that's a bit disappointing. So I was a bit disappointed because I was looking forward to trying it. And then I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll drop them an email. Dear Funcom, my name is Paul Grogan. I have a YouTube channel. I've been told I quite like you. I, I, I've been told that I would quite like your game. Um, it's my. I was actually going to be doing some live streaming of it on my channel. Here's a link to my channel. Um, it's my birthday today, and I was looking forward to playing this. And, it, and I know it's not your fault that it's been pulled, but and I basically I, I wrote to them and said, "How does it? You know, I can't remember the words that I used. I didn't say give me a code. I said." If I wanted to produce some coverage of your game, is this something that you would be able to provide me with a Steam key for or something like that? I can't remember how I worded it. Much better than I've just worded it right now. Um, and they came back to me really quickly, um, I think. Oh, no, no, they didn't. That was it. They came back to me on the Monday. So the weekend had passed and they came back to me on the Monday, first thing Monday morning. That was it. I woke up and I got this email and it was like, hi, Paul, sorry we missed your birthday, but we're happy to provide you with a key. Here you go. Let us know when you do some coverage. I was like, "Wow, that that was that was quite cool." I, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so anyway, I've been playing a lot of Conan Exiles, um, and there's some videos on my channel. I've done four videos on my channel. Uh, there was going to be another one last night, but if you're interested in crafting survival games, have a quick look. Um, see if you like it. Since then, after part four, we have actually moved away from that. Uh, Paul Luxton, a friend of mine has set up like a private server now and we're now playing on a private server and we've got a few people in there. Uh, the Groganite clan is there and we're just playing it and it, it's cool. So we're not playing on a public server, we're playing on a private one so there's no other people, it's just us. We're killing crocodiles, building a house. It's all good. Really, really enjoying Conan Exiles. Uh, yeah, if yeah, if I wasn't so busy working, I'd be playing it a lot more. Um, but yeah, the advantage of the private server is that private server is there now. Paul's probably there right now building another house. And I will log on maybe tonight and just have a quick look and see what's happened. And yeah, that, that's really cool. So yeah, I'm playing I'm playing that. So there'll be more coverage for Conan XLs coming up on the channel. But yeah, that's, that's the digital games that I've been playing. And also that's the coverage that I've been doing. Okay, let's do a quick Patreon update. So I, I mentioned a couple of times already that a lot of the content that I've made in the last few weeks is not sponsored, okay? Now, obviously, I work full time in the game, full time in the games industry. I do rulebook work and bits on in the background, and, and I do produce how to play videos and things like that. But over the last three weeks, I've probably done about a third of my time has probably been actually paid for by by publishers. The rest of my time is purely funded through the Patreon campaign, and that is allowing me, it's giving me the financial flexibility to create. All of this other content, which I would not normally be able to create because I'd have to work. So a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters because I'm really enjoying it. So I'm producing content for you, which is obviously good if you enjoy the content, but I'm really enjoying it. Those games, City Builder, Swatch, uh, Europe Divided, where, uh, oh, and where is it? Intrepid where I invited the designer of the game to come onto my channel and we did a live stream where we played the game, not sponsored, but that took me a good three or four hours of my time out and I was only able to do that thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So if you're looking at my Patreon campaign and you are not a supporter of mine and you think, well, why, why should I chuck Paul a dollar a month because he's paid to do the work that he, he does? I'm, I'm not, okay? Some of it, yes, but a lot of it, no. A lot of the content on my channel is purely funded through the Patreon campaign. So as always, a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially at the moment. And I think I usually say, especially at the moment, for some reason, but especially at the moment because of the amount of 
free content, that I, or the amount of non-sponsored content that I'm producing compared to the sponsored content. I wouldn't be able to do it without the support of the Patreon. Um, right, so what else do I want to say? Contest, yes. Each month I run a contest where one of my Patreon supporters, producer level or and above, uh, can win a copy of a game. Last month's contest was to win a copy of Mini Express. Okay, now I did the draw this morning uh, and Tony Booth Lydon was chosen as the winner. I've contacted Tony. Uh, Tony has been with me as a supporter since December 2017, which is scary that I've been doing the Patreon campaign that long. Um, but yes, thank you very much, Tony, for your support. As I say, you've been with me from almost the start. I think I started it in October or November. Um, but yeah, pretty much since the start. Uh, and Tony has won that. I have passed your details on to Mo Ideas. Mo Ideas have provided me with that prize uh, and they'll send it to you as soon as the game is out. Now, this month's contest, I don't have, I, I haven't had time to contact a publisher and say, oh, would you like to give me a copy of a game for a giveaway? And I kind of thought about it at the weekend and then I thought, no, I'll tell you what, let's go to my games room because I'm running out of space. I mean, I've already run out of space with games and I'm already spreading into the attic and the games room and I've even had to put some, uh, not the games room, the, the studio and I've even had to put some shelves in the studio. So yeah, definitely running out of space with games. So I thought, right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. This month, I'm gonna go through my collection. I'm gonna look for a game which I think is in as good as new, uh, it's, in a, it's in as good as new condition and is a fairly decent game but it's one that isn't going to get played much more here and it is now just taking up space. And the game that I'm going to be giving away this month is City of Kings. Now, City of Kings is a game which I know a lot of people like and I'm friends with people who really like this game, but it just didn't click for me. I played it, I think, three or four times, maybe five, to try and sort of experiment with it and see and I tried different scenarios but it just didn't, it just didn't sit with me. It, it just was a game that I was looking forward to, but just ended up not, yeah, I don't know. There was something about it that wasn't quite right. Now, I'm friends with Frank, the designer, and I have huge respect for what Frank has done. Frank has turned his dream of, of this game, and Frank is now a, you know, a big successful publisher, and he has booths at uh, Expo and Gen Con, and he's done other games, he's done Isle of Cats. You know, he's a great guy, he's a great designer, uh, and as I say, I, just, I, I don't want to knock the game at all, um, and maybe I didn't play it enough, but yeah, with all of the games coming in, uh, just, yeah, and it's a big box game, right? So this, this is why I think it's a good giveaway. So it's a second-hand game, it is my copy of the game, but it's in good condition, it's only been played a few times, it's all there, it's probably got some Kickstarter extras, I'm not quite sure and I'm gonna be giving that away this month. So if you wanna be in with a chance of winning City of Kings, you don't need to do anything. Uh, if you are a patron supporter of mine at producer level or higher, you don't need to do anything um, because your name will automatically be entered into the draw and then I will get you the game somehow. I don't know how, uh, if you're in the UK, because this is a big heavy game. So I kind of hope you're in the UK if you win um, because it's going to cost a lot to get this shipped overseas. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, that's just one of the things about running these contests is sometimes have to soak up the postage costs. But again, it's just, you know, it's how, how it works. So yeah, so this, this month's contest is to win a copy of City of Kings. Um, and yeah, so the Patreon update, every month I do a thank you to all of my new supporters. Um, it was a very up and down month last month. Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody who's stuck with me as a patron supporter. Uh, thank you to all of the new people who've joined and I will put on screen now. This is all of the new executive producers and the new producers and then everybody at supporter level uh, over the last month. Your name will now appear on the end credits of all videos uh, from the 1st of July onwards. I think I might have missed it for the 1st of July, but yeah, you, your, your name is now in the end credits. So thank you very much to all of your, your support. Right, okay, next up is other things that I wanted to talk about. So yeah, I talked about Virtual GridCon a little bit, and I did talk about the games that I ran at Virtual GridCon, but the other thing that was happening at Virtual GridCon is the charity raffle. Now, I'm glad I ran the charity raffle, but if I ever do another one, I will do it differently, because at the real GridCon, the physical convention, I ran a charity raffle. GridCon won, 
November 2019, ran a charity raffle. Publishers donated prizes. They sent them to me. Uh, I had a whole load of other prizes donated to me. Matt from Creaking Shelves gave me about, I don't know, eight or nine games, review copies of games he'd been given that he wanted to put into the charity raffle. We had a huge amount of games in the charity raffle, right? Not all of them were brand new. A lot of them were secondhand, and there were some joke ones in there as well. Um, but people bought tickets, and then we did the raffle. And it took hours to organise, but it was worth it because we raised £1,833 for charity, which for a small 200-person convention was just amazing that we raised that much money. When GridCon 2 got cancelled, remember GridCon 2 is now November instead of GridCon 3, um, but when GridCon was cancelled and we decided that we were going to do a virtual convention, I thought, oh, we're not going to be able to do a charity raffle. We're not going to be able to raise the money for the charity which we were planning to do. Now, you know, a lot of charities out there are, are big charities. And if you give them a thousand pound, two thousand pound, they go, oh, thank you very much, they take it, and you know, that's it. The charity that we're supporting is the Chrysalis Youth Empowerment Network over in Uganda. It's a very small charity and every bit of money helps. So the fact that we weren't able to give them this amount of money in the summer, I was like, oh, okay, so maybe, maybe we should do something, but it's gonna have to be done different because, and this is like, this is a week and a half before the convention is about to start. And I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a charity raffle. Yeah, maybe I will. So I started reaching out to publishers and I said, look, here's what I'm doing. Would you be prepared to donate something, but don't send it to me, right? Which they normally would do. I said, hang fire, I will do the draw, I will choose the winner, and then I'll let you know who the winner is and you can send it to them. So for the publishers, this is quite a big expense because they've got to, they're providing the game, but they're also having to ship it to somewhere that could be anywhere in the world, okay? The support that I got from a lot, from a lot of the publishers was quite overwhelming. Now, not all publishers uh, were in a position to be able to donate, but a lot of publishers reached out and said, yep, yeah, Paul, we want to support this. We see what you're doing. We support the charity and we'll happily provide you with, you know, and some of them were extremely generous with, with what they provided. Um, and then basically it got out of control. The whole thing got out of control and I was absolutely swamped. Bearing in mind, this is in the run-up to me organising the actual virtual convention. So I'm organising the virtual convention. I'm organising all of the live streams that I'm doing. I'm trying to sort out the Discord channel. I'm trying to sort out the virtual bring and buy. And this charity raffle stuff is, it, it, it took over. The end result, which I'm absolutely overwhelmed by, is that we raised over £10,000 for charity. So, I mean, thank you doesn't even cover it, okay? To all of the publishers who donated prizes and are having to now send those prizes around the world, thank you. To all of the people who were very generous with your donations, I mean, some people were massively generous with their donations, thank you too. All I did is it was I put in my time, which was, you know, it was very rewarding uh, to see what was, all, all of that money coming in. The admin overhead for us, and the reason why I'm saying I'd do it differently next time, was the it, yeah, it was it was a huge amount. It was probably about 60 to 70 hours of, of, of admin work before, during and afterwards uh, to sort out all of the prizes. It ended up just, as I say, it was spiraling out of control and it ended up being far more complex than we thought because we weren't able to get a good enough report from just giving, trying to tie that up with the emails, the way that the banking system worked. We had one person, for example, who donated money they were showing up on the Just Giving page as they donated money. They got a reference number uh, and they sent me an email and they said, Paul, I've just donated this amount of money and, and everything else. And then when we asked Just Giving to give us an export of all the people that donated, this person was on that list as well. So we thought, okay, well, it's a valid one. It's gone through. And I did the draw and they won something. And then I contacted them and they said, ah, yeah, the payment didn't go through. And we're like, what? He said, oh yeah, it got declined by the bank. And we're like, well, hang on a minute. How can we trust all of this data we've got if, if, anyway. And this person was extremely honest and said, look, 
you know, I, I wanted to donate, I, I tried to donate, but it, it, it just didn't accept my, my bank details and it rejected it after like three days. So yeah, there was a huge amount of admin to do on it, but it was extremely worthwhile. Now, <clears throat> if you look on the Just Giving page, you will see that it raised £10,000. It's actually more than that, because uh, when we were at, we, we reached about 9200 I think, but then I asked um, Ben, who runs the charity, to keep the Just Giving page open, because it was my birthday. So uh, it was my birthday the Friday after Virtual GridCon, and what I said is, I said, look, let's just keep the page open, and I will do one final social media push and say, look, it's my birthday, I don't want anything other than please consider donating, right? You can no longer enter the raffle. The raffle is finished, but you can still donate. Let's try and get it up to 10 grand. Uh, and we did, but it went over 10 grand because we had an anonymous donator who said, I will make it up to 10 grand if it doesn't reach 10 grand. It reached 10 grand, so they donated 500 pounds themselves. And then these other couple of weird payments where somebody thought they donated and hadn't. So it's actually closer to 11 grand than it is 10 grand, which is astonishing. And, you know, I referred back to, you know, if you give a bigger charity money, they'll say thank you very much and they'll use it for good things. The money that we've raised for this charity is more than they've had, I think, from, from any other place. And they're going to actually be able to do something with it that they, that was the cat, um, they're going to be able to do something with it that they've never been able to do. They wouldn't have been able to do. I think they're going to build a school or something like that. It's just fantastic. So yeah, huge thank you to everybody for taking part in Virtual GridCon and for donating and for supporting and for sharing it. Yeah, massive success. Thank you very much. I will likely not do anything like that again unless I do it with a team of people helping me because it was just a crazy amount of work. Other things that have been happening, if you are still with us. I had my 50th birthday on the 3rd of July. Uh, it was an interesting one. Uh, I've been really nervous about my 50th birthday. I'm ha I was happy being 40. Uh, I did not want to be 50. Um, I don't look 50. I don't act 50. I didn't want to be 50. It's, it was very scary. I've, I've actually been quite scared about it for the last year or two. Uh, as I've as I've thought more about it, um, as it as it was mostly took the day off work. I did a little bit just because that's me. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, we had a really good day. Vicky did made me lots of nice food. Um, we had what was it called? Strawberry French toast casserole in the morning, and then the morning for the next three days we played Tainted Grail. We got Steve the Snail. Who's my new little mascot? Um, yeah, really good day. And thank you to everybody for their cards, uh, messages of, of happy birthday, and for the, uh, the few extra special small presents that I got as well. So thank you to Adam for the, the set of puzzles that we, we did yesterday. Uh, that, that was nice. Uh, thank you to Leanne for the Jaffa Cake cufflinks, which I'll put a picture of on screen now. You've got to see them to believe them. Yes, they are, they are cufflinks in the shape of Jaffa Cakes. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you to everybody for, as I say, all of the messages, all of the cards. Um, yeah, it, it was quite touching and it, it, was, it was just what I needed because uh, this birthday, um, not just because it was my 50th and the stuff at Virtual GridCon, if, if I'm honest, hand on heart, has been a difficult one for a number of reasons um, and I've actually lost some friendships over the last couple of weeks with certain things that have happened. That's been a very difficult thing for me to take it's um, disappointing, obviously, for me to have all of that positivity around running and organising a virtual convention, managing to raise £10,000 for charity, having a big birthday, and somehow, yeah, there's, there's, there's some stuff that I'm not going to talk about here, but it, it's, uh, it, it's been a difficult two weeks. And what that has meant was those people that did something for my 50th, whether it be sending me a message send me a card or anything like that, it means it, it, it means more um, because, you know, yeah, anyway, thank you. Other stuff that's been happening. Westworld Series 2. We've started watching Westworld Series 2. We're on episode five or six now. Very confusing. <laughs> I hope it will make sense in the end. Um, <clears throat> Westworld Series 1 we watched when it came out. 
was very, very confused, but it was just brilliantly written, brilliantly filmed, and just everything about it was just, wow, this is, this is excellent TV. And then at the end, when it started revealing what was going on and what it was all about, it was like, wow, this is really clever. Westworld Series 2, a little different, taking things in a little different direction, uh, but still enjoying it. I've heard season three is awful, but we will see. So that's one thing we're watching at the moment. Um, Formula One is back on. Big Formula One fan, have been since 98. Uh, so yeah, Formula One's back on. We've had two races so far. I won't say the result in case anybody's watching it, but it's good to have it back. It's obviously different because there's no crowds. It's going to be a very short season. It's going to be a very unusual year for Formula One. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad it's back on and we've had back-to-back -back races. So we had one over my birthday weekend. Uh, we had one just this weekend gone and we've got another one coming up this weekend. So, so that's good, watching a lot of Formula One. I haven't been doing much painting. Um, I'm in a bit of a painting lull at the moment. Lost me mojo a little bit, but uh, got some painting stuff for for my birthday. Got a wet palette. I need to get back into painting. Um, and we've also been doing some house stuff. So the back wall, uh, I'll show you a picture of it uh, now. This is what it looked like before. And I'll show you another picture of it now. We've decided to get rid of it all. This was a really hard decision for us because it actually looks... When, it, when it's all neat and tidy, it looks really good. But the maintenance of it has just become too much and we've decided we're going to get rid of it all and then we're going to get somebody in to render it. Uh, and as soon as we started taking it down, I, I personally, I thought, yeah, this, this was the right decision. It'll look a lot nicer when it's finished, um, but it, the, the back garden, is, it now looks a lot, a lot bigger because we don't have like two foot of vegetation sticking out. Um, anyway, that's that's everything on my list. As usual, there is probably some really big important thing that happened in the last three weeks that I've completely forgotten about. And what I'm going to try and do moving forward is I've actually got all of this on a Google Doc. I'm actually going to keep this document open and between now and the next video log, anytime something happens that I think, oh yeah, I would talk about that in a video log, I'm going to try and put it into this document. So this is my me trying to do a mental reminder so that when I get to this point next month, I don't go what's happened in the last few weeks and we can go oh, I don't know can't remember um so yeah there you go that's what I'm going to try and do next month um I hope you found this video useful I know a lot of people enjoy these vlogs um and thank you very much for watching thank you again to all of my Patreon supporters for making this possible uh, again this is going to be another few hours of my work week gone that I'm not paid for purely supported through the Patreon campaign thank you very much there was one more thing I wanted to mention just remembered didn't write it on the list virtual manacon this weekend okay this weekend would have been the real manacon which is a convention that i go to which is in leicester this weekend is going to be virtual manacon i've got plans um i've got a whole load of live streamings that i'm doing it starts out with a game of macau on friday night then i'm doing some under falling skies on saturday uh sorry on saturday morning and sunday morning i've got some code names games one each night I'm doing, what else am I doing? Uh, Pathfinder Adventure card game is happening on the Saturday. Vindication is happening on the Saturday. Vindication is happening again on the Sunday because Vindication is a game that my patron supporters have voted on that I would be reviewing this month. So I'm going to get two games of it in this weekend coming. Um, and we're going to learn how, I'm going to be learning how to play Dragonfire as well. So yeah, this week I've got Anachrony solo playthrough tomorrow. I've got the review of Glenmore 2 to do on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm doing a live playthrough of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. We're picking up from where we left off last time. Uh, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is virtual Manicom. So yeah, very busy week. Lots of live streaming to come this week. I'm going to take a step back next week, so there'll be less going on next week. Um, but yeah, this week is going to be a very busy week. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them in the show notes below if there's anything you want to ask me. Don't forget to join the BGG Guild so that when I get round to putting those things up there, you can do that. Do that. Uh, boardgamegeek.com slash guild slash 2258. Join and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe because otherwise you won't see anything that goes on there. And that's everything. I'm going to go and edit this now and hopefully get this out um, by tonight or tomorrow. But yeah, until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience.
Visit GameToppersLLC.com.